So for there being a finite number of prime numbers, we can list all of the prime numbers. That's the way that we start this one. See, I can't even remember some of these proofs. Then what we do, if we have got a list of these prime numbers that we've got here, if we consider the number, capital N, which is all of those prime numbers multiplied together, and then we add one to it, when you divide this number by any of the prime numbers, you will always have a remainder of one. Just kind of think about that for a second. If you've got a number that is made up of prime numbers being multiplied together, if you divide it by any one of those prime numbers, you will always have a remainder of one. Yes? Do you have to write the prime numbers when you just write P1? You don't actually have to write them. We're just going to call those prime numbers P1, P2, P3, all the way up to Pn. We're imagining that there is a list of prime numbers because there is a finite number of them. We're stopping at Pn because we're saying that's when they finish. So this number that I've imagined, which is all of the prime numbers being multiplied together plus 1, it is not going to be divisible by any of those prime numbers because any time you divide it by any of those prime numbers, there would be a 1 left over. So because this number cannot be divided by any of these prime numbers, that suggests that n itself must be prime because it's got no factors. None of the prime numbers are factors. Or it suggests that its prime factorization contains only primes not in our original list. So that it may be divisible by a higher prime number, but if it's not in our list, then we can't show that it's been divisible by it. We can't show that it's prime. So this contradicts the assumption that there is a list that can go all the way up to Pn containing all of the prime numbers which means that there are an infinite number of primes. Now, I suppose probably the best way to think about this is to try, try it with some numbers to kind of prove what's happening here. So I'm just going to imagine that all of the prime numbers that exist are 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, and 19. I'm just going to imagine that that is all the prime numbers that exist then my value of n would be all of these multiplied together, that's 2 times 3 times all the way up to 19, plus 1. So 2 times 3 times 5 times 7 times 11 times 13 times 17 times 19 plus 1. That is 9699691. It is 9,699,691. Now, either... This is a prime number, which means that we've got a prime number that is not contained in the list, so we have a contradiction. Or this has got another prime number as a factor. Now, there's a button that you can press on your calculator, on these older calculators, where you press shift and then the comma button, and it says fact, and it will automatically do it into its prime factors. And actually, this, when I put it into its prime factors, is 347 multiplied by 27,953. So actually, it is not a prime number, this one uh, of n plus 1, but it has got two numbers as its prime factorization that are not in the list. So either way, we have come up with some prime numbers that aren't in the list, which has gone against our contradiction that we've had here. So if you just type into your calculator 9699, Nine, six, uh, 691, press equals, and then press shift and then fact, which is the commas. It breaks it down into its prime factors for you. And so you can see really what's happening with the numbers here that we've got. Now, this is a tough proof. You saw when I did it just now, I kind of started it off in the wrong way. But everyone can get the mark of assuming that there is a finite number of primes. They then listed them and just called them these different P letters here, multiplied them all together and added one, explained that you wouldn't be able to divide it by any of those numbers. So either this is prime or its prime factorization contains only primes that were not in the original list, which means that we haven't got a list of all the primes, so we have a contradiction and there are an infinite number of primes. So I quite like doing this one with numbers because I think this is all incredibly abstract and it's difficult to see what's going on. You can't do it with numbers for the actual proof in the question, but this number version is what's hap happening 
in this lettered version that we've got over there, okay? This again is something in theory that you could be asked about. It's pretty unpleasant though. Uh, this is definitely university level maths as well. This is the numbers that's going on behind it. This is what the proof should look like. So I've saved you a bit of time of writing that. 